This is the Far Out Podcast, Episode 5, the 40-year reunion of the Southside Band, brought to you by the Powerhouse Pub and Gibson Guitars. Hey everybody, it's great to be back in California. I just flew home from Fort Worth, Texas after competing in the Carity Celebrity Cutting Challenge. It was a great event. We raised a ton of money and I've got a lot of fun stories to tell you about that event uh, in a future episode of the Far Out Podcast. Right now, it's 4.30 in the morning. I woke up a couple hours ago. I couldn't sleep. I've been thinking about this podcast because... It is very special to me. It, it's a 40-year reunion of my very first band. I mean, I'm taking you back before Tesla, before City Kid, even before Earthshaker, uh, you know, into the 70s when I was 10 years old and I lived in South Sacramento, which is what I wrote my song Southside about. The music you heard at the beginning of this podcast is the song Southside, and it's my latest single. And it's a song about my friends that I grew up with and learned to play music. My friend Bobby Reed just passed away, and I sing about him in the first verse. And Bobby was my best friend in seventh grade. He taught me my first licks on the guitar. He and I used to hang out, walk home from school. Sometimes we skip school and take the bus downtown to go to record stores and he was the guy that turned me on to the first Black Sabbath album. I mean the first time I ever heard Sweet Leaf was with Bobby Reed uh, on vinyl and uh, he was a black kid and he used to protect me from bullies in, in the neighborhood. It was a tough neighborhood. Probably still is. You know, I drove through it. I did a little uh, mini documentary uh, on YouTube. If you're interested, you can check that out. It's a lot of fun. I took a trip down to South Sac and saw Frankie C. He's the guy I'm singing about in the third verse who was Bobby Reed's drummer in his band. And he had a Vega and uh, we would cruise around in the Vega. and We would go to McClatchy High School and watch the Battle of the Bands. You know, there was a lot of musicians in South Sacramento uh, in the 70s. Uh, Robbie Bickford, of course, Brian Wheat and his brother. And I had Atomic Tommy on the podcast recently. But way before we started playing in the clubs and stuff, there was one gig that changed my life. And that was at a Moose Lodge. And I'm also singing about that in the song Southside. It was my first ever paid gig. I was 12 years old. And I had a band, and in that band was my cousin, Mike Fusey, who was very instrumental in me learning and being interested in music. He was the first kid in our family to have an acoustic guitar, and he would bring it over, and and I learned my first chords with him. And also in the band, the Southside band, was John Barry. And I haven't seen John Barry in 40 years. And, you know, I always wondered whatever happened to him. And on this podcast, he reluctantly joined joined in. Uh, you know, I didn't think I was going to get him in front of a microphone, but it was so great to have John and Mike Fusey here at the house in the studio talking about the old days and going way back to 1978. You know, it's funny. You can have friends that you haven't seen in forever and then you can just pick it up like it was yesterday. And that's what we did on this podcast. You know, I have, like I said, I haven't seen John Barry in 40 years. And we were just talking about riding bicycles and and playing music together in the garage and reliving our uh, childhood memories. And it was a lot of fun, man. What's really cool is both of my friends, Mike Fusey and John Barry, have led very successful lives in their own ways. John Barry has been building choppers and riding Harleys all across the country with his wife of 27 years. My cousin Mike is doing well. He's got a career at Lagunitas Brewing Company. He still plays music and loves playing acoustic guitar. He and I still get together to this day and jam. So it's great to have these guys on the podcast today. I hope you enjoy listening to our interview. Stay tuned. This is the Far Out Podcast with me, your host, Frank Hannon, sponsored by Out of Bounds Brewing Company in Folsom, California, and the one and only Gibson Guitars.
All right, so I'm sitting here with my cousin Mike Fusey, my old friend John Barry from the South Sacramento hood, the South Side. What's up, fellas? What's happening, Frank? What's going on, man? What's going on, John? This is a very cool moment for me on the Far Out podcast. I am sitting with my very first band. We didn't even have a name, I don't think. Yeah, no name. We're the band with no name. That I can remember. The band with no name. I'm sitting here with Mike Fusey to my left, who's my cousin. He taught me my first chords on the guitar when I was 10 years old. At least that, yep. We played our first gig at the sixth grade talent contest. Yeah, I think we did Down on the Corner, right? <laughs> I don't know who was more nervous, you or me. <laughs> oh, I know I was nervous, man. I was very nervous. I don't know who's more nervous now. Probably me. <laughs> you? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting here with John Barry. John Barry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. What's up, dude? Just living. Yeah? Yeah, just living. You remember me. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you barely remember anything, huh? <laughs> How many brain cells you got left, bro? I got a lot. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't I didn't do that much drugs. That's good. That's good. I never did. Not not too much. I did enough for both of you put together. <laughs> I mean, I did some things here and there, but it, you know, I met her. 27 years ago, and that was up done. That long? Yeah. Wow, congrats. Been married like eight. Awesome. Well, I have to be honest, you were always the cool kid in the neighborhood. Who? You. Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your standards are pretty low? Huh? Standards are pretty low? <laughs> <laughs> hey, like the Beatles song says, it was 40 years ago today. Yeah, Sergeant Pepper. Is that right? He taught the band to play, that's right. It's been a long time, man. 40 years ago... <laughs> I was telling you, John, that I had another verse in the song. I was almost going to release it, but then I took it out because you posted those cool pictures of us jamming at the Moose Lodge, our very first gig. <laughs> and uh, it reminded me of the great times we had in that garage, man. Yeah, we had some fun, for sure. So you played drums with your dad, and your dad was really cool, Wayne Berry. Yeah, that was him. He was a country singer, and he got us our first gig, man. I don't remember exactly how that gig came about. Pretty sure it was him and uh, another guy got us that. Did they have a band, or what was it? Yeah, my dad always had a band. But what was the name of his band? Country Sunrise. Country Sunrise. Oh, nice. Yeah. That was the first time I'd ever known anybody that had been in a studio and recorded. We were totally taken by that. You know, that the fact that he recorded a 45 was just like... It was big news, man. I was like, wow. You know, 45 and some cassettes, which is funny. <laughs> so we grew up, the three of us, on Fruit Ridge Road in South Sacramento, which is the subject of my song, Southside. Taking it back way before Tesla, way before City Kid, even way before Earthshaker, to our band. That's like 78, 79, 80, yeah. something like that? Yeah. I think it was 78. 77, 78. So basically, like for me, my mom picked me up from my grandma's house in Stockton and moved me up to Sacramento to Fruit Ridge Road into that little white house. And that was some of the best times of my life. 1976, Frampton Comes Alive was blasting yeah. on yeah. the airwaves. Yeah. Chacha? Yep. Aunt Chacha, yeah. Aunt Chacha had the record collection. She had every Ted Nugent album. Yeah, we had Chach and Martinez, you know, that would both, you know, bring music and just like, wow. It's like Ted Nugent, uh, Queen, um, Frampton Comes Alive. And we, we were so, we were surrounded. That was a great decade for music. To me, the 70s is the best, especially 76. Boston's first album just came out. Yep. I think Chacha had that one too. Yeah, it brings back so many memories. Yeah, it, it is a best year of music for, for me also, Frank. So, you know, at a risk of not being politically correct, I would have to say that our neighborhood was very ethnically diverse yeah yeah <laughs> very rough. ethnically diverse i would agree <laughs> and uh you know so for me i was pretty much a minority being one of the only white kids in my neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that's probably right yeah fruit ridge back then yep but you're a white mexican i am a beaner schnitzel if i mean if i'm gonna be politically correct i'm i'm, <laughs> I'm half mexican half german but uh yeah <laughs> yeah, man. And, you know, we never knew what John was because he was always real greasy and dirty. <laughs> I'm uh, mainly Portuguese. Portuguese? Yeah. Okay. But, John, now what I remember about you, man, is you were always in the garage working on bicycles. And this is back in the day when we were, like, chopping up huffies and trying to put shocks on them. And, and you know, all the kids in our neighborhood, in our culturally diverse Vato Cholo neighborhood. Oh, we had that. They had them Schwinn, like, lowrider bikes. You remember that shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With steering wheels on them. 
With the steering wheels, yeah, right? The shocks, yeah. The, the chain wheel yeah, steering yeah. wheel and the shocks, yeah. But we were more into the BMX bikes. I, we, I was, for sure. But we couldn't afford them. No. So what did we have, Buff? <laughs> Huffies. Had the Huffies. Does anybody out there remember Huffies? <laughs> I did have a mongoose. You had a mongoose. <laughs> I did. So uh, I couldn't ride it as good as you guys rode your huffies, but I had a badass bike. It was nice. <laughs> I mean, keep in mind, this is before cell phones, before freaking CDs. I mean, this is in the days of vinyl albums. Yeah. Vinyls and eight tracks. Eight tracks. Eight tracks. Good job. A Pioneer Super Tuner was the... The, the pullout. You know, the Pioneer Super Turner pullout. That you know? was the car stereo, man, yep. to have. Martinez had one of them in his 57 truck. Yep. So anyway, getting back to John over here, we were always riding our bikes and like taking them apart and putting them back together. And that's something that you've really made your life passion. Pretty much, yeah. I got out of music and uh, found motorcycles and girls and then just took off and stayed with the bikes and build them, ride them, yeah. paint them, whatever it takes. You pulled up on a badass chopper, man. What, it's a knucklehead? Tell, yeah, it's tell a us knucklehead. About that. Every year, knucklehead. Every year. <laughs> Started from nothing, like a frame, and just found pieces, made them fit, and painted it. And yeah. Pretty much 100% myself. That's awesome, dude. And you were doing that back in the garage when we were kids. like Always with a bicycle, yeah. Did you ever have a mini bike? Oh, I always had mini bikes. Remember them? Briggs and Stratton? Because I lived more towards Power Inn before I lived in the White House. And I had a couple. And then uh, one night some guy cut the fence, stole them. Oh, man. And then that was it for the mini bikes for a while. That was the hood. Yeah, it was. <laughs> no shit. That it was, was the, the hood. south side for sure. Yep. I got busted riding a mini bike on Earl Warren's school grounds, and I got that was the first time I ever got a, a citation. A moving violation. Yeah, I got a few warnings. Yeah, but you played drums, and uh, my cousin Mike here he played bass, and I played guitar, and we played our first gig at the Moose Lodge, and we're still trying to figure out the location of that Moose Lodge. We don't know if it was Del Paso Heights, Roseville. Yep, it could be either one of those. I'm leaning towards Roseville. Really. I'm yeah. thinking it was, but I don't remember how we got there, but you do. Yeah, on your dad's panel van. It was a 57 Chevy panel van. 57. Yeah. Nice. That truck ended up rotting out in the field out there, and it was sad to see that yeah, thing go. Yeah, because there's so many memories involved with that panel truck, man. I see that panel truck now, and I think, you know, Bob Dylan, I mean, before, I'm talking before the band, we would go on these camping excursions, and, and you know, Bud would take Every all of us cousins, we would all go out Oregon, <laughs> Washington. Wow! And there was like we we're eight deep in the back of that panel truck, <laughs> at least. And June and, and Buddy Nashville Skyline is it's just like I remember that so vividly. That Bob Dylan album, we wore that out. It had Johnny Cash on it too. Yeah, I remember the song "Lay Lady Lay." Yeah, and I remember "Girl from North Country" where Johnny Cash and and Bob Dylan are singing. And we'd be in the back of that panel truck. Now, this is a 57 Chevy panel truck with a stick shift on the thing. I mean, it rode rough. Right. And it had the wood panels on the bottom floor there. And we would just throw sleeping bags in yep. that and drive for hours and go camping up in the hills of, you know, Spanish Dry Diggings, Georgetown. Yep. And we just never knew where we were going. And we'd just wake up somewhere and there'd always be a stream. You know, there'd always be a stream around us or some wilderness. And it was a... That was my only time to get out camping. That's that's the only time I did it. But that music really affected us. It clings, you know. Yeah. It, it, it clings to me. If I hear it now, it's all I think about. It's funny how music and songs can be a soundtrack and trigger memories of your childhood. It really does. It's like it's like a time machine, man. You hear a certain song, it takes you right back to that certain. As soon time as you hear it, it's right there. Exactly. It's like whoa. Uh, just going to the you know the old hood today and looking at. The White House. Um, Which is gray now. Yeah, it is gray. And, <laughs> and it's really, uh, fa it's falling apart, dude. It it's is. A, and the trees are dead. And it's really bizarre how uh, things change over time. So that 57 panel truck we're talking about, it was an old black Chevy. With and, a green top. And we loaded all our, uh, our stuff out to the Moose Lodge and played our first gig. John's dad, Wayne Berry, Country Sunrise, they would play the Moose Lodge, right? And yeah. you played that gig with them a few times? Uh, at least once. Yeah. And I have some video of that, too, but no sound on that one. John has unearthed video from 1978 at the Moose Lodge. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> of the I'm three really, of us. I'm so excited to see this video, man. <laughs> you know, we may post that. I don't know. We're going to check it out, and we'll see. <laughs> so this old neighborhood that we lived in in South Sac at that time, it's all been built up now, but there was a lot of open fields, 
And so behind John's house, there was a field that kind of attached to where I lived on Wallace. And we would run out there in the middle of the night, crossing that field and be, you know, riding yeah. our BMX bikes out there. That's how we got around. It was the back way. Yep. And so we put on a Halloween party. And that's what triggered me putting you back in my Southside song, is you have some killer pictures from that Halloween gig. I've got a couple. And I've got the only pictures. Yeah. Which yeah. is crazy. I don't think anyone else has any, man. So cheers to you, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> my mom, I guess. these pictures. Those are awesome, man. I'm looking at your drum kit, man. Was that a trash can lid for a symbol? <laughs> <laughs> It sounded like it. It was it was an old old symbol. Was it Barry rigged? Yes, it was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming it's okay to say that because his wife his is. wife said that about him. <laughs> so let's get back to your chopper, man. So you build choppers. What other bikes you got, bro? I got a super long chopper. I got like a six foot long front end on it that I ride mostly. I got this one here. I got, I got a short black bike that I take on the road. Mm -hmm. We do uh, long trips. And I'm building a really bad, super long trike that can blow people's minds. Oh, yeah? A trike? Well, it's got four wheels on the back. So I don't know if it's really a trike, but it's long. Well, I can't wait to see that. When do you estimate it's going to be ready? Uh, it might be a while. <laughs> <laughs> Finances and everything, you know how that is. Yeah. That might be something I could ride. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a while. One piece at a time or what? One piece at a time. Yeah. Is that how the best bikes are built or what? That's how they all are built. Yeah. One piece at a time. You find it here, you fix it, put it on. Find it there, you fix it, you put it on. I have to tell you, everybody, John's a rebel. He's nervous over here. I feel bad. I kind of <laughs> twisted his arm because I really wanted him to be a part of this podcast. This is really special to me, John. I'm going to start getting choked up, bro, because this reunion of the three of us sitting here is really freaking awesome, man. It is. I it, can't believe it's been 40 years. Uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, 40 years. That's, yeah. That just blows me away. That is a long time. And I'm looking in your eyes, dude, and you're the same kid I knew back yeah, I know, then, man. I'm same I love here. It. Same here. It's fucking cool, man. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's way cool. <laughs> All right, I'd like to pause the interview for a few minutes while I uh, play this guitar. This is a Gibson Flying V, 120th anniversary model. And I'm sitting here looking around the studio at all my blessings and feeling like, you know what? I'd like to give something back. Back to the South Side, back to South Sacramento, the Sacramento Children's Home for Abused Children. In South Sacramento, there's the Sacramento Children's Home that helps abuse children. And if you're interested in helping me donate to the Sacramento Children's Home, please make an offer on this Gibson Flying V. It's a beautiful cherry color. It sounds phenomenal. And I would like to offer it up for sale and give the money to the Sacramento Children's Home in South Sacramento for abused children. All you have to do is offer anything above $3,000. Send an email to guitar at frankhannon.com. That's guitar at frankhannon.com. Send an email with your offer, and the highest bidder, the highest offer, will get this Gibson Flying V guitar, and the money will go to a great cause, the Sacramento Children's Home. If you are interested in this charity, please email guitar at frankhannon.com by December 20th, 2019. So, John, you have an idea. You have a lot of friends in the biker community. You've been an avid bike enthusiast for since I've known you, and you've been building choppers, and you've got some ideas of what you want to do with your veteran biker friends, man. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, basically, I want to put a slideshow and have all the old guys watch it and then pause it and get all their stories to come out, get it all recorded, and all put to a, a soundtrack or a, a video or whatever. So that way the stories are saved forever. Because that way uh, when they die, all the stories are gone and nobody knows anything. Yeah. That way it's like history. Well, I'd love to help you do that, man. I'll do it. You see the studio? Yeah, yeah. You got over your stage fright? You're no, not nervous no, now? Still, no, I'm still sweating. <laughs> You're still sweating? <laughs> <laughs> and all it does is take practice, bro. So we're going to get you yeah. up here and we'll do some more. Maybe I might even get you back on the drums, bro. What do oh, you think about oh. that? We need to do a set. 
<laughs> let's, yeah. let's do, we need to do a little set list. We're getting the band back <laughs> together. <laughs> like the Blues Brothers. We're on a mission. I haven't played since I was 16. Since you were 16? Yeah. And I tried to play like a couple years ago, and I, I just lost it. Really? Well, well, well you know, we'll you lose that. all that motor skills, you know, over time. Well, we'll get you back behind that vintage Ludwig kit. You saw that vintage Ludwig kit down there. What do you think of that? Did that trigger some old? Uh, you know. Yeah? Got a little bit. Did you there. get a little bit of a woody going on there? No, no, I wouldn't say that, but. <laughs> well, it's a wood kit. That's what I'm talking about. It's a, a vintage maple Ludwig drum set. So let's get back to your documentary you want to do, man. I think that's a really cool project. I'd love to help you with that. Mikasa Sukasa. We got the studio. We got the video editing software there. You know, one thing I've learned about the biker community and a lot of events that I've performed at with Tesla or myself or whatever, bikers are the most charitable giving organizations there is. I would say so. I play Sturgis, right? Yeah, I play Sturgis. I play the Buffalo Chip a bunch. Nice. Speaking of surges, how many times have you ridden out there? Uh, about five. Wow. And you don't trailer because you ride all the way. Been riding at least 35 years and never been on a trailer. Wow. So you guys leave Sacramento. Yep. And take 80 or what? 85, which, whatever way we're going. Mm-hmm. And we just keep on going. And your wife, Raina, she's awesome, by the way. Yeah. You've been with her for how long? How long has that been? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just put you in the doghouse, bro. 27 years? 27 years. It's been so good that you forget. So we've been riding cross country for uh, 26 years. And she rides too. Yes. I built her a bike, rigid, and she rides it right behind me. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. We need to get somewhere, we'll get there. And you guys are hardcore. I mean, these are like hardcore bikers. I would agree. Yeah, man. Well, the bikes are. Not huh? a, the bikes are not us. Okay. <laughs> we just ride them. The bikes are hard tails. <laughs> so you guys, you and Raina have ridden cross country over five times. Did you tell me earlier that you've ridden all the way to Florida? We made it to Homestead, Florida, and then her transmission broke down, so we had to get it fixed and come back. We were trying to get to uh, the southernmost part. Uh-huh. Key West or something. Yeah, the Keys. And we didn't make it. Okay. But you like, made it back? Yeah, oh well, yeah, we made, made it home for sure. So you ride all the way there and all the way back on hardtails? Yep. Wow. <laughs> 21 do, days. Do you plan on going to the Keys again? Is that something uh, you want to check off? No. No? You're good? <laughs> okay, I, I want to pause and say some. I think John here has definitely overqualified for the Far Out podcast. Because the theme of Far Out is... Outside of music and doing other stuff. And Definitely. to ride a hardtail Harley chopper all the way to Florida and back, it's pretty far out, Total, dude. Totally <laughs> qualified. <laughs> we also went to Maine just to get lunch and have a lobster and come back. Wow. That's cool, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Just to do it. Just to do it. Far out. So do you uh, ever work on other people's bikes and, or help? On, on occasion, I do. Yeah? If you need something done, let me know. Okay. I'll give you the brother deal. The brother deal? (laughs) I had a basket case once, man. I had a a 75 Sportster. AMF, I guess, was making bikes then, right? Yep, yep. Is it true that those are the shitty ones? Uh, During the later years, the AMF were pretty bad. Yeah. Because they didn't care about quality control. They were just cranking them out? Yeah, they just spit them out. They'd leak in the showrooms before they even sold. Before they even sold? Yeah. Yeah, I want to buy that bike right there with the oil all up (laughs) underneath it. (laughs) And then they sold it to some other people. The quality went sky high. That's when the Evolution motor came out. Yep, And it's been taken off ever since. What's your favorite Harley engine? I like the knucklehead, just for the looks of it. Mm -hmm. But reliability, the shovelhead is for me. I like the looks of a shovelhead. Mm -hmm. That little Sportster I had had a shovelhead look to it. Yes. Kind of miniature, though. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at you guys talking. It's just like you guys are talking Greek to me. I was like, <laughs> I, I like to look at bikes. It's, that's a badass bike. But uh, yeah, I don't know what what is. That old rat bike I had, it didn't have mufflers on it. It just had straight pipes and it had apes to the moon. Ape hangers, uh, for all you people who don't know, they're the handlebars that reach for the sky. What do you think of apes, bro? They look cool as hell, but I can't ride them. Can't ride them? No. I think I'd have a hard time riding that Springer you got out there. It's, it's rough. Got to pay attention. Yeah. There's no margin of error, is there? Uh, there's a small margin, <laughs> but you have to pay attention. And the other chopper, how long are the forks on that bike? It's like six foot long, Great. and it's a Springer also, and you really got to pay attention on that one. So you do a lot of leaning? A lot of leaning? Leaning to turn. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's all about yeah, leaning? Yeah. 
See, now on a horse, you don't want to lean at all. It's the opposite. My wife is like, quit leaning. And when I was trying to learn how to ride a horse, because I'm so used to riding BMX bikes or Harleys or whatever, and, and it's all about leaning into curves. But with a horse, you have to stay completely square. Centered, huh? So uh, when we get you on a horse, you're going to have to... to uh... Uh, that's, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I have a better shot at getting you on drums. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen either. Come on, man. Oh, We're man. getting you on the drums. We get the band back together, John. <laughs> yeah. Well, fellas, I think we got enough uh, to share with everyone on the Far Out podcast. Mike, I want to thank you for turning me on to music as a kid. I knew you were going to make it, Frank, and I wanted to say this part of it, but I know I, I went a different route, and when I quit the band, I don't know how old it was, but you probably remember it, but I went in there to get my amp, and it's like, yeah, because uh, I'm done getting picking up my amp, and you were playing Seasons of Wither on an acoustic guitar, and I'm just, my mind was just totally blown that you had it down note for note, and it was just like, shit. And that's like, I put quitting to the side and it's like show me how to play this song right now oh yeah you rejoined the band for a minute for a minute <laughs> it's like show me how to play this song and because i love the ballads and then i've always loved the ballads See, I, I i remembered you teaching me that song i thought you no, showed me how to play it. no you showed me and it's just like oh my god i couldn't believe you learned it i mean just note for note and you were always shredding you know doing the leads and stuff but a ballad and an acoustic guitar to me is just everything for me. That's what I play now. And yeah. I play that because of you. And, okay. uh, you know, when, when I hear you or a Thanks, new song, man. it's just like, you, you, don't, you have no idea how much you push me just to be decent. And uh, it's just like, if, if my cousin could do it, it's like, I'm going to try to do it. And, <laughs> and if I'm a quarter as good, I just love it, man. It's just, and that's why I fill my home with these guitars. And uh, you're a big part of that, man. You're uh, a huge influence on me. I feel music kind of saved both of us in, in the hood of South Sacramento. I mean, you and me were more interested in playing music than getting in trouble with the oh, rest of the sure. kids. And, you know, we'd go to, uh, you know, my grandma had that organ and you guys had an organ, I think, also. And uh, we I mean, we were it. poor as hell, but we always had guitars and like little keyboards laying around somehow. Yep. And then you had your little phonograph player when we were in the band. And, you know, we were listening to that thing with headphones or getting as close to that damn turntable as we could and you would just like every note out of it whether we're listening to van halen's dude remember when van halen one first came out yes that's all we listened to yeah, that oh, was a shit dude, right that was a shit and, jesus and when we heard eruption for the first time oh my god i appreciate what you're saying because um because we always learned by ear sure with a record player we didn't have youtube barely could get lessons or anything nope. so the way we learned to play music was by listening to albums over, over and, and over. over and over again so with a turntable and the needle you could skip back and forth and somehow i got blessed lucky whatever it is to be able to hear the details and pick up pretty quickly by ear yeah but when van halen one came out i was like holy shit i don't know how he's doing that <laughs> yeah it was it was it was another oh my god what what is he doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I know Van Halen was in our set list, you know. And, we played and, You uh, Really Got Me going really got at, me at the going. Moose Lodge. <laughs> uh, Jamie's, Jamie's Crying. Did we do that? I, I don't think... know, but I love that song. <laughs> Jamie's crying. We may have tried Ain't Talking About Love. So I'm going way back, everyone. Far Out Podcast is taking you way back to the very, very beginnings of my career. I've been very lucky to have a long career in music. But Mike, you are now working at Lagunitas Brewery. I am. I'm working in uh, Lagunitas Brewing. I'm their packaging manager in Petaluma, California. So I've been there about six years. And I've been in packaging since I have literally quit our band yep when you quit the band you got a job at campbell soup correct so you know i i did the campbell soup thing i lied about my age told my mom <laughs> it's just a summer job it's a summer gig i'm gonna go do this for a couple of summers and i ended up doing 32 summers 32 wow. years at campbell yeah, soup. 32 years there and uh and you were a supervisor or what'd you do i, I worked my way up so i kind of did everything at campbell's you know so potatoes carrots coming in i was sorting them you know it's like you got to Pull the black ones, pull the bad ones out from the ground and, up. Uh, yeah, from the ground up. I've learned. I learned everything there is to learn there. And uh, there was a shot to go management, and people was like, you know, we're a union house. You don't want to go management. Mm -hmm. It's like, but you know what? It's nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Yeah. And uh, I ventured it, and 
I'm very proud of that, man. I'm very proud of you, cuz. Oh, well, thanks, you, man. You're proud of me because of my music career, but I'm proud of you, too. Well, thank you. Thank and, you very uh, much. you know, just like what I told John, when I look in your eyes, you're the same kid I remember when we were kids, well, you know. Went to Rudder together. It was like, you know, that was huge. It was like, <laughs> screw Milsey Wood, we're going to go to Rudder for you. <laughs> so, so what Mike's talking about is... Our junior high school was called Wilsey Wood, the one that we were supposed to go to, and we were scared to go there because it was... <laughs> it was a tough-ass school, man. Yeah, it there was, was a lot it of was. gangs and riots and stuff going on, and so we decided to go to Rudder, which turned out to be a worse school. That was the worst <laughs> school in the world, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in seventh grade, and we're having to get up an extra hour early to catch that 51 bus on Fruit Ridge. Yep. Go to Florin Mall, wait another half hour to get to Rudder. Yep. All for nothing, because we got our ass beat there, too. <laughs> oh, my God. I got my ass. I, I My cheekbone got caved in there. It was a bad ass wow. kicking. But we went to Wilsey Wood the next year. We was like, screw Rudder. Yeah. But you know what? What was good that came out of Rudder, Frank? Uh, tell me. Seventh grade guitar class. Yes, you're right, man. Right? Yeah. In, in Mr. Vale's class. We learned Hotel California. We did. He broke all these songs down, and it's, that was my first time seeing, oh, this is a chord. This is how you play a, you know, a three-finger, you know, G chord or D string, you know, D chord. Mr. Vale taught us all that stuff. I remember we learned a bunch of stuff from Mr. Vale, yep. but I asked him if he would show me how to play me and Bobby McGee, and he wouldn't do it, because he said it sings about drugs in that song or something. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of trippy. But yeah, that was the best thing to come out of Rudder. So, so I think we went there for a reason, because honestly, I, I fell in love with the acoustic guitar then, and it's like, I love this guitar. It's awesome, right? And mm -hmm. it's so cool. And like you were saying earlier... Um, you can take an acoustic guitar anywhere, man. You can do it. And just yeah. take it. You know, uh, I packed three of them here today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I believe everything happens for a reason, man. Yep. Like the three of us sitting here right now, reunited 40 after 40 years. years later. Yeah. I cannot believe it, man. It's so good to see you, John. Good to see you, it too. Really, really is. Real good to see you. All right. You've been listening to the Far Out Podcast. Thank you for listening. We'll see you soon. This has been episode five, the 40-year reunion of the Southside Band. I'm your host, Frank Hannon. Thank you for tuning in to this podcast. We are sponsored by Gibson Guitars, Bizarre Guitar in Reno, Nevada, and Out of Bounds Brewing Company in Folsom, California.